Hello, this is Victor here with a second part of the painting tutorial of the Blue Bolt Ball and now we are going to uh, try to finish this in the second part so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to paint the skin of the goblin and I'm going to use Skarnik's green uh, this is quite a light green I like to paint, I like to go for different uh, tones lighter for the goblins and darker for the orcs and much darker for the black orcs so in this case I go for a quite pale green, but it's not going to be that pale because later on we are going to do the wash. So I will apply a Skarsnik green here on the skin part of this goblin and I come back once this is done. Okay, once the skin comes dry, now I'm going to use built and green and apply a wash on the skin. This will darken this quite bright green we have here. give all the shading we need. See that it works pretty well. We have a nice shading. I'm going to apply it well here. The arms. No, I'm going to start working on the scales and, yeah, and scraps we have that he has on the back. I'm going to take a thin brush. We're going to start applying first downstone. Downstone is on. Yeah, we're going to apply downstone. No, I'm going to apply. I'm going to go for a brownish color, so I'm going to play Blend Blade Brown to start highlighting this. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put the bodies of this one, also the spikes we're going to touch. I go there. This. This will give a nice contrast the blue skin tone because it's more warm color and I think will make the scales quite interesting because these are right, like rocky scales you can also use the brush technique to do this to do the nails as well okay so what I'm going to do in the nails is to make this type of lines okay one. by using this color we give, we give this rocky sensation Okay. 
So you see here, when feed done, I'm going to go back to the scales. We're going to do all the scales like that. Okay. So I keep doing that and I come back once this is done. So now all the scales are painted. Okay. And we can do, well, I have the first highlight, is what I mean. And we can do a second highlight using uh, break, um, Rackard uh, flesh. Okay. See. So this will give some additional accents and highlights to these scales slash uh, spice and we are I'm also going to touch some of these like small postules okay to give to mix this with the scales, okay. So what we're going to do is on the spikes, we're going to apply this just at the end of the spike. Here I'm going to apply it. You don't need to highlight everything, just add some additional accents and highlight to give more depth and volume to these scales and also to make them to pop up a little bit more. Just shake a little bit more of the paint. Now it's much better. Okay, you can see. touching so I consider more exposed and some random parts to give this uh, earthy rocky look to this type of scales spikes They look like the magic if this is a stone fall have to look like a little bit like rocks or stones. As I said, it also helps to differentiate and to pop up this compared to the color of the skin. Here I miss a small scale, so I will do it with this color. So you can be quite random on this, you don't need to highlight all the scales to the same level. We're going to do also the close 
for the nails to do that I'm going to do the same that we did on the horns on the spikes okay something like that to give a little bit more of volume depth to this and do the same on the hand nails I put too much, so I will use a little bit of Venom Blade Brown. To compensate. And even a little bit of Stone Bermuda Fur. It's looking quite nice. And we can work now on the tablet keys, on the piece of cloth he's wearing. Okay, so we are going to highlight with downstone. And at the end I know that at the beginning of the video I said that I want to do this uh, red, but I will leave it grey as it is. I think it works better. So with Thumbstone we do some Right. And to make it, to make the transition softer, I will use as well ashing gray. Okay, especially on the areas that are more smooth, we will go with ashing gray next to it. And even mix it a little bit just to help on these transitions okay. I 
clear what I'm trying to give is the sensation of a bleach black So I will do the front as the same way I did this. So you can see it's a highlight using downstone and then um, mixing a little bit with etching gray to smooth the transitions. Is all what we do here. Okay, and we are going to do the same on the front part of this piece of cloth. Over here, and then we go with. I was using ashen grey and no downstone. I have and when it's too stark, too strong, maybe too we too white, we go with ashen grey and we smooth the transition. Okay. So but here we want to add small one and there like the scales a little bit visible through so we add like that. Okay, and I will do now the same at the front because it is a repetition playing low and placing now a shin and now downstone and as this is a repetition of what I did on the back uh, I will come back once this is done so that was done I'm going to work now on the shoulder pad okay I will give I, I want to match a little bit the time, the team, uh, the, my old team. So what I will do first, I will highlight a little bit the red uh, to to make the red to pop up a little bit more. So this will also include. I will do all the red. Then will also include the red on the helmet. Okay, I will go a little bit orange on the helmet to make it different to show that it's a mismatch to the one and later on we are going to do the weathering as well. Okay, something like that. Then here we want to be softer. So what I'm going to use as well corn red. Remember that we have done the wash, so no The red is darker than the corn red because we have done the. And we are going to clean up a little bit the wash. I'm going to use a bigger brush for this surface. Okay. So I don't want to go into the holes. I just want this to look. Pop up a little bit the red. Okay. Want to clean up a little bit the wash. We are going to do the same on the goblins red. So we are going to do the elbow protection. The 
shoulder pad. The position of this goblin is quite weird and was quite tricky to assemble. Now that we have the red, we can do the eyes. Okay, with corn red. We apply that in the eye. And we want to do it on the other side if it's possible. Okay. Now I'm going to do the number so that I need to check. So I will put the thirteen, the number thirteen on him. I will use no downstone again. Normally I do it in, we put the number 13 in this position, so this is going to be the one and I do like a type of orc glyph, so the one is like a triangle like that. Okay, and then the 13, the 3. I'm going to do this. One, two, and three. I think this is clear. I'm going to put the numbers as well at the rim of the base, so when you play you can know exactly which number it is. Player. Okay, and what I'm going to do next, I put like a cap on, on the orcs, so you have this type of, uh, this what damage, these triangle things here, so I'm going to do the same on the 12. So to do that, I'm going to use black in that case. And what we are going to do is we are going to apply this here like that. ones here, then I will put some at the front. If you make a mistake like me here, we are going to correct this with red. We are going to put a number as well 
on the goblin this is going to be more tricky because the shoulder pad is quite small so I will put a number that they will put as well on the goblin so and the goblins will be on high numbers so I will put him the 22 or the 21 is going to be easier so to do the 21 to see how I did and to keep the same things so we are going to do the shape first because this is going to be quite a small space for the so it's going to be more like a double Z This goblin is even smaller than the regular like goblins Blob ball Maybe it's also because of the position he's How he's placed And now we have the numbers done. What I will do, I will add this gray around the black. Just in one side, and this will help to pop up. It's like giving a two-dimensional shape Not exactly, but it's similar So you only want to go one side To help On popping up this thing Here I do the same Here 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 I come back with black to clean it. Good. And yeah, this will be good. And on the numbers, okay, I'm going to take even a lighter gray now. This administrator gray. I will also add this around the numbers. So this administrator way is completely off. So we do like that. Like here. 
this. Perfect. We are going to do, don't forget it, on the goblin. We also want to add some. Okay. As now we have done all the armor plates and parts of metallic, we are going to start doing the weathering. I will start first applying uh, lead, the lead belcher. Okay. In the past where we have damage or we want to show some damage. So I will do for example here in the holes of the helmet. I will add this also damage like that. So this helmet have to look a little bit damaged as well on the scratch. So I will add another one like that. And for the moment this is good enough. We are going to paint as well the smallest spikes we have on the armor plates. Scratches we have here. Okay, don't worry if it's not too visible at the beginning. We are going to work to make it more visible. I'm going to add another scratch to the temple here, and we are going to go up on the borders and do this. So I imagine that the tool is not doing too much maintenance of this thing, right? So I will expect that the edges of this armor plate is going to be quite damaged. We do the same at the front. Okay, and maybe it's breaking this. Let me tell you with the pattern we did, but this is why I did first the freehand and no use when you destroy your freehand adding all this damage. Okay, we can add as well another scratch for example like that. Add another one here. Add some. Especially on the edges you want to do this type of damage. We are going to play the paint as well. This to clean up a little bit the wash and to make it a little bit shiny, but you can also be there is not to be too uniform at least some parts more matte so to show the the weathering we'll also paint again over the nails here We need to do, I was forgetting, the weathering on the goblin. 
Sorry, this video is a little bit long. I think here we need to spend some time showing these bars. We'll put in the new production a couple of scratches. Make the spikes of the ball more spiky. Okay. No. I'm going to take Mephisto Red and very carefully. We are going to go on the lower side of the scratch following the metal. So let me show what I mean. So I go here. Okay, sorry, I'm going out. I know again. I go here. And I follow like that. Okay. We'll do the same. And then I like, imagine this way you go with the red over the number. I'm imagining that the number is painted on top of the red. So when the number is scratch, right? When the number is scratched, what you will see is the red paint under the number. So this way, here on the hole, this may be too evident, so we are going to review this later on. And but in the black I will not do the same because it's not will look weird. But here on the red, I go next to the silver. I some red. This will aim. Okay. Okay, we did before another scratch. And do the same here. If you can see, I have not done the the helmet because the helmet is already lighter. So I'm going to use a little bit of Wild Rider Red on the helmet. Okay, and we are going to as well. To highlight this, and then we'll go okay, something like that. Now we will go with black okay, and with black we are going to do a similar thing but on the opposite side. 
so the black should be at the top side okay let's go here where we have this red okay we are going to go something like that well and then what is important is that one when you add the black you want depth to the Scratch. Okay, this one A little like that. I, on where we have the black paint, I will not do any other thing. I have to do the same here, I was forgetting this one. So on the top part as well. This will make the silver to pop up a little bit more. Okay, and now on the metallics, that is mainly this thing, we can do like a similar thing. So we do like a scratches just with this. With this with the black. place no it's okay so why we did that because now I'm going to come with a, a lighter silver this I know that this can be quite a lot of work on this weathering but I find it the best way to do it okay and we are going to apply this in the part where we have applied the black next to it as well at the top of the teeth These are the parts that are going to be most polished and we're using by the way uh, silver host uh, stone host silver sorry okay so this is a way to Next to this one, I go as well like this. So this combined with the black will increase the deepness of these scratches. If you only play the silver, 
will not make the same effect. Here I make a mistake, so we can correct it like that. So then on this part here, we're going to apply the lighter silver. And here as well. But in the parts where no, we have put too much black or too much red and it's not that visible. So we go now with a little bit more of silver in the middle and we make sure that the lines are thinner. Here for example this hole that was almost covered a bit of red, not a little bit of black, I of silver. This one as well. Put a little bit here. Okay. Just checking that I'm not missing anything. I will add a little bit. Okay, now let's finish the helmet, but I will highlight the gold with Auric Armor Gold. Most likely this is not gold, because I don't think a human thing will go with gold protections. Most likely it's some type of alloy or painted, so we are going to add some weathering there. So one thing I'm going to do next is I will use Seraphine Sepia and I will apply this on the bones. These bones can look quite weathered. highlight in the meantime the brown part. So to do the brown I'm going first to start highlighting with yeah I will use more frame brown okay try not to touch the bones while you're doing that or if you don't feel comfortable, wait until the wash on the wand is dry. But now I'm only on this and I want to keep. So what I'm going to do is, as you can see, do the highlight with more from brown. So looking for the different
this have a lot of texture. You can even do it by brush here. Because really this glove have a lot of texture. What I'm gonna do too fast is I will touch the part I think have to be highlighted. See, I will do this and then the stripes will do them off camera. So I have the feeling that I'm making this video too long. Okay, you see. And by doing these quite extreme highlights, the leather will look, you have the sensation of being weathered and older. This is why here it's working quite well, the star highlight. So I will do now the stripes and the belt. So to the belt, yes, I want to show you. What I'm going to do on the belt is I will highlight in a different way. So instead of highlighting parallel to the belt, I will go here and I will do very small strokes like that. Okay? And then when I see a cut, I will go over the the bell as well. Because you really want to give the sensation that this bell is old and damaged. Okay. To be careful here, we still have some fresh wash. Here as well. Okay, so I will do this part and then come back. So we have done the highlights, the brow, and I'm going to do a very sec a second highlight, but this one has to be very careful. I'm going to use Tau Light. Okay, so this is going to be quite a very clear color. And you only want to put this only on the most exposed parts and where you really want to make a very extreme highlighting can be parts that are damaged parts that have a lot of it's a lot 
And I will do as well this type of we will do that too. These are the things to keep the glove. brighter to show them. This, I don't know how this is called, the laces I guess. Also use this as a some more extreme highlight and on the bell we are going to play a little bit to show to make this weathering more visible as you can see is very little quantity and are just a small here this is a spike, so vertical strokes, so vertical perpendicular strokes to the belt. Now here that we have this, like a scratch, we want to go next to the scratch. And do. So I'm going to go here next to the belt as well. And if we touch a little bit out, I come with black. Okay, when I find the black, okay, I mix. Okay, come with black. Here, like here, with light only clean up. Now it's done. So, with the aqua, the tau light aqua, we want to be very careful and not to put too much, and it's to give just the sensation of whether it or damage. It can be a little bit slow, but I think have a very nice finishing. I'm going to do the same on the goblin belt. And the goblin belt is, belt is too small. 
prefer to go just in the same direction as the ground, but perpendicular. And do this. Okay. Light a little bit of highlights. This side. Okay. Okay. Seem they will look there. Progress is quite good. So now I'm going to do the black school thing on the piece of wood. Okay, here you can put the number and you can put your team symbol. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the school that we have at the front of the orcs. I'm going to first do something like that. Okay. Like that. That and now I'm going to do Quite a rudimentary school, what they have. Here we have a little bit more here. With this device in the meantime, I need to paint, and I'm going to paint the goblin skin while this is drying. Okay, the goblin skin, I will go back to um, Skarsnik Green. Some people like to put red or pinkish on the goblin skin, I prefer to keep it all green, but it is goes to the taste of everybody. Okay. I will highlight. 
it with this was the color we had as a base color but because we have done the wheel tank have applied the wheel tank wash or wheel tank green uh, shade this is much darker now well some of these colors when they dry you have to be careful because sometimes they can change a little bit the personality Yeah. Now what I will use, so I will go even, yeah you can go lighter or you can at this point use a little bit of red here on the nose. I'm hesitating now but I think I will go lighter. So I will take a little bit of white. Too much light, and then we apply. This is going to come really a bit nose. We can do the same on the end of the ears. And I forgot before doing the this. to just apply a little bit here But I will do now. I will take darker green, caliban green, and I will go next to the eyes. Okay, be very careful with that. But I want to go. And the reason is, I want by adding some dark color around the eyes, will them will look then more scary. Because now we are going to add a little bit of orange to the eyes. So I'm going to use. So let's take the greens out. We're going to use Fire Dragon Bright.
Things are looking quite well. Okay, now that the black has dried, I'm, go I'm going with the corn red. just on top of me like it just wearing my pyjama so yeah right everywhere so what I'm going to do with the red so to do the school I will do something like that Two and then I do the red teeth, that is the characteristic thing on how I paint the school. Okay, now it looks a little bit messy, let's put a little bit more right here. But what I'm going, I'm, I want to do now is, I take again Ben Blade Brown Right. Sometimes you have to do these things to make things to look good. You have now is better. Okay. But to make this a little bit even more visible on the eyes, we have to add a little bit of downstone gray. So, what we do. Okay, like that. And I do the same on the other side. Like that. Then the teeth are not that visible. 
so we can add a little bit of orange to make it pop up a little bit more in that case so while we'll write the red Okay, here we have the black on the goblin is going to be done the same way as the tabar, so I will not do it on the video. So the, the last thing I, I want to do on the video, then the meter is going to be almost done. Okay, now we need to do the, the bones a little bit and we need to do the ball. So I'm going to do the ball first. So for the wall I want to go for a different type of leather than we did on the glove and on the belts. So I'm going to use no graveyard earth. Yeah. And I put some paint here. And I'm going to apply this. Here. We can mix this now that we have the paint there with a little bit of rack and flesh, very little. Okay. And now I'm going to do the bones. So I'm back, I'm going to use again Uzbati bone. But before doing that, I'll clean up a little bit this. I don't want to contaminate my minute. So I'm going to use Uzbati bone. Just to add, you can see that with the seraphine sepia at the end it gives a very nice yellowish on the bones, they look great. Just a little bit of what you want to add some highlight, especially for the book here. Parts. Okay. Then as well here. I 
and with this step I share I have show all the different steps we need to paint this guy okay so I will do the gray, dark gray parts on the goblin as I did the cloth on the twelve, and I come back to show you the final result okay so I have done the, the thing on the goblin, the gloves but uh, then I realized I forgot this part here to do this part here I will use no administrator gray and we are going to add a little bit of a light with administrator gray remember this part was not painted originally and have this way because we did the wash then on all on shade on top of white so this is really the, the original color of this and give a very nice different gray the other thing I'm doing as well is I'm applying a little bit of just on the most exposed edges and some of the parts I'm adding a little bit of administrator gray to add some extra highlight okay I realized here because I have my fingers dipped with red editing a little bit this okay I add just very little yeah, it's not good to work with your fingers dipped The most you push the extreme highlight on this gray, the most black will look like. Sorry, I ran out of memory while I was talking. So what I want to say is that the most we try to extremely highlight uh, uh, will give more the sensation of black, and as well, we'll add. Some more definition. So just a little bit here. I will do the same on the moon. Put this little guy. Okay. And. I was forgetting, I just want to show you one thing because it's quite difficult to see at the beginning but he has so the metal palms at the back of the hand is held by a small bells that are here so I will put more fan brown on top of this so they are and we can see them better especially here it is the only one and with that, no, I'm done. So this whole looks like no, the 12. It's quite, this miniature is quite a tricky part to show the front. So the front has to be shown like that. And here we have, this is the uh, 12 from Blood Bowl, from Games Workshop, painted for with the colors of my team here with the black school. So let's make a turn. I'm quite happy how this looks like. I think it's a very nice, looks like better when it's painted. Uh, uh, although it's not one of my favorite miniatures. But here you have, this is the 12 from Bolobol. I hope you have liked this tutorial. Please subscribe if you didn't subscribe it. Share, like if you have liked this tutorial. And as usual, thanks a lot for watching. And see you later. Bye.